so hello everyone. Um, so for, uh, uh, first question, um, I just got up with an idea. How about we start serving alcohol now? <laughs> would that be a good idea? That would be great, right? So, um, you know, it's just easier for me as well because, you know, it's always um, more relaxed to, to, to listen to a presentation with, with, a, with a glass of wine. Um, so, uh, let me first introduce uh, myself. So, my name is Charles, and then, um, yeah, but what, uh, what I will um, present tonight, it's not about my uh, own personal work, um, but about um, some of the work that we have done as a um, organization or as a company. And then uh, as of last um, week, we have just incorporated uh, into a um, very young architectural practice, which is called AONA. And then, um, but before that, I have been already doing some works in uh, Nepal with uh, my another organizer. So we'll we'll get we'll get to that. Um, oops. <laughs> Scroll. Scroll right. Uh, just <laughs> maybe, maybe I can do that. <laughs> So um, I do not want this to be a very serious presentation, so I just want to um, kind of improvise a bit as well. And then um, for um, some of you might have known that I'm also a writer, I'm a, a blogger on um, uh, Stan News, which is the, uh, the, the president of it is um, <coughs> House News, Ju Chang Sanman. So, um, so I write something about, uh, I, write, I write quite a lot about architecture and, and the city. And I try to um, establish a sort of a narrative between um, architecture and city and also the politics as well. And then, um, so, um, but today, today's presentation is about um, my architectural works. And then, um, but when I look back into my own personal work uh, in the past two or three years, I started to figure out that you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like bits and pieces uh, laying, lay, lay, uh, laying around. And then I, I was trying to find a story to stitch them all um, back together. And then, this is how I come up with um, today's theme or today's topic, which uh, it's about primitive. And one of the reasons why I um, want to talk about the, the, this topic is because I think this might be the um, um, sort of the future. So what I'm trying to say is that maybe being primitive, um, it's the future itself. And then we often forget about the fact that architecture sometimes is about something very primitive. It's just about you know people, human beings with um, some pieces of wood or some pieces of bricks, and then we put together a house. But then in a modern environment like um, what we have in Hong Kong, we sometimes are always um, uh, we we always have a distance between. The architect and the and the and the architecture. So in between us, we always have you know contractors. We have surveyors. We have con uh, uh, engineers. We have all this professional in between us. But then when we uh, look deeper into the idea of primitive, it's actually talking about something you know origin, something first of its kind, and um, this is actually the original. Um, definition of the word primitive before the uh, 14th century. And then after that, it, we started to use the word as, um, when, we, when we want to describe something uh, as Asian, then we use the word uh, primitive. Then for me, I uh, start to question, is it because of the fact that after um, 14th century maybe, then we started uh, to lose the idea of originality. Is it, does it mean that after 14th century, originality does not exist anymore? And then that's how I um, will introduce my projects in uh, Nepal with another organization. This is a, um, Architecture for the Mass, Yan Yan Ginzhou. It's another organization that I have um, established after the uh, 
earthquake in Nepal in uh, April earlier this year. And then um, uh, what we wanted to do is to somehow is to use um, architectural design as a tool to, to, to uh, disaster relief. So instead of um, us raising money and giving money to them, why don't we um, try to use our knowledge or try to use our skills as an architect to help them um, and to help them to construct better buildings. But then when I, um, when, when, when I go to Nepal, I started to figure out that it is, it is ourselves, it is me, who have to learn something from um, these people. And this is the village that um, we uh, visited. And then the first thing that struck me a lot is that um, all, these, all these architecture, all these projects were spontaneous. It's just the, the villagers themselves and the contractors. So they, they just build whatever they want or they just build in whatever style that they, that they want to build. And then uh, one of the very peculiar quality within this building is that they seem to be um, to 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 they seem to be stuck at this um, uh, uh, between they're stuck between this um, modern or and and rural building. So it's always like uh, feels a bit rural, but it always feels a bit modern, and then it always feels a bit um, incomplete. It always feels a bit um, unfinished. So it's always st stuck in between. Or maybe even this, this kind of massive development, which almost resembles a turn of century modernist building. And then it is under this kind of context that we um, built our first project in Nepal. And this is a um, temporary shelter that we have uh, constructed for the villagers. And this is, this is not intended to be a, uh, uh, a product, a giveaway, but rather it should be kind of like a prototype. The reason why we um, uh, conduct this prototyping in Nepal is that this can be a process to teach the community on how they can use the local materials to help themselves. So um, the traditional idea of disaster relief is, all, is always about you know, us uh, shipping materials or shipping uh, uh, resources into this um, uh, uh, earthquake uh, uh, disaster regions, but but uh, what um, it's one of the difficulties faced by um, disaster relief agency in the is that, as you know, that the 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 country is it's, it's rather uh, under development. So all the road networks, they have not very developed. And it's not really possible for, um, for us to ship anything um, into, into this very mountainous uh, country. So one of the, I, or I would say the only way to disaster relief is to help them to use their local resources and the local materials. So we came up with this idea to use bamboo and um, to construct a, um, a framework that would be uh, that can be used as a temporary shelter, or even more importantly, they can be appropriated into different uses. So that this is only um, some kind of knowledge transfer um, from us to them, and then they can use the system to um, to to construct their own structures. Say. And then one of the things that I have learned um, in, 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 in working on projects in this region is that no matter how many drawings you produce, they wouldn't look at it. So I think this, this may be the, the case in some, um, some construction sites in Hong Kong as well. They, you give them the drawings and they, they, just, they just don't look at it. So one of the solution to that is that we build, we build a model and then we um, bring the model with us to to the site and then once we take out the model and then everyone was like ah now I know what 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 you're talking about but before we were talking we, we had a meeting we had an hour or two uh, meeting with them talking about the drawings and no one understand what we're trying to do but then once they see the model everything is soft and then uh, as what I've said the um, idea is to use local materials. So all the bamboos were actually purchased in the, re in the village and then we have to use this um, um, tractor machine 
to uh, uh, to transport all the materials into uh, to the site, which is around like ten minutes from the uh, town center, from the village center. So we work together with uh, some local carpenters um, to to assemble this whole thing, and then. This whole thing is intended to the, the frame of this structure is intended to be assembled on the ground and then they can be put up one by one and then you know uh, and then after we have erected the frame then you can um, uh, work on the piles and after we set up a uh, uh, several of these frames then we can start to put them together it's just very simple um, construction so um, uh, we can work with the, the local carpenters and then we, we can just tell them you know can you help us to assemble these and they will they will be able to do that and then apparently oops, apparently um, all these techniques were existing in the village it's just, just that they haven't find a, found a way to uh, harness the potential of all these techniques and then by doing this um, structure, this temporary structure, we can somehow um, let them understand uh, the fact that you know, constructions can be very simple. And what you uh, know about construction, what you know about um, assembly can be used to make something um, nice. And then that's, that's um, the, the objective behind these, uh, this project. So this is the uh, um, completed structure. And then one of the reasons why we use these corrugated uh, sink panels to clad the whole thing is that it's because um, in, in, in the beginning we intend to use canvas, but canvas turned out to be um, um, simply uh, not accessible in, in the region. So all the available um, canvas is uh, being stuck in Kathmandu for some reason. So all the um, uh, disaster relief agency, Red Cross and um, UNICEF, they ship a lot of tents. You know, they, all these resources were stuck there. It, there's no way to transport these materials to um, this village, villages. So all the people, all the villagers, uh, all they can do uh, is basically to help themselves. So all they have in the, um, in the village is this uh, corrugated sink uh, panels and it, it, it can get rather stuffy it can get rather hot in the in the summer but uh, somehow when 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 we uh, start to balance uh, between the shelter from rain and wind and then um, being a little bit hotter in the in, in the summer then we have to give them this sort of protection in order for them to uh, in order to help them uh, through the monsoon season so these are the drawings that we have produced and then we show it to them and then no one can understand what we're trying to, to do and then this turns out to be uh, not very useful and then uh, it turns out that they, when uh, we show them the model and then everything is kind of clear. So <coughs> this is uh, a very important uh, uh, thing that we have learned throughout this um, uh, process. So let me see whether the video is ready yet. I'm trying to load it on YouTube. So, so we have made this um, video to um, describe a bit about the process. There should be some sound. So we have already gave them the dimensions of all the bamboos so they can cut it before we, we, we uh, went there. This is the first day of the constructions. There were, um, we hired four carpenters on site. Then there were another um, five local volunteers. And then from Hong Kong, we have um, five people as well. So it's around um, 10 to uh, 12, 13 people. Then in the beginning, they were still trying to understand what we, what we want to do. So they just stand there and then look at us a, a bit skeptically. Because somehow what they think is that um, our design is a bit over-engineered. 
because from what they have, they have uh, actually been using bamboo for constructions uh, locally, but not in this kind of system. So in the beginning, they were a bit skeptical on how you know stable this can be or how well structured it can be. But then it turns out that you know after we have uh, set up the first and the uh, the first few of this frame, then they started to realize that this is really rigid because we pull up a lot of these diagonal bracings. And then they they, they have found out that uh, this is much much more um, stronger than what they had in the in the village. So the whole process started to speed up because everyone knows, kind of know what uh, they, they should do. And then by the end of the uh, first day, we have already uh, pulled up all five of those frames and then we started to put them together. So this is a really, really quick process. And in the afternoon, we actually had a like a two hour lunch and uh, had a nap as well. <laughs> so this is really uh, quick constructions. And the local, instead of using uh, nylon strips as we did in as we do in Hong Kong, they use metal strips, and they have this um, little tool to tie the metal uh, uh, to tie the bamboo together with metal strips. This is the second day. The beginning of second day, we uh, have uh, we started to put up these uh, metal sheets as the uh, as the roof, as the uh, uh, as the envelope. So this is something that I am I was a bit reluctant to uh, to do is to nail into the uh, bamboo because once you nail into the bamboo, it splits and it starts to create um, cracks everywhere. But then after I saw a few of those uh, nails, it turned out to be all right because the, the uh, species of the bamboo is quite, quite strong. And also because of the fact that uh, this structure is not intended to be permanent. So at that time, it's, it's, it's uh, acceptable. Because at that time, uh, it was um, June already. And then um, by the end of June, it will be their monsoon season. And then the rain will be uh, quite terrible in, 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 in the monsoon season. So they really do have to have a stronger structure to, uh, to protect not only themselves, but also their crops uh, through the monsoon season. So this is basically the, uh, uh, the shelter. And then we savage some of the uh, 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 woods and also uh, materials from the uh, damaged buildings to for the doors and um, uh, for the for the other parts of the envelope. So this is the uh, completed shelter. And then after that, we um, uh, we went back to Nepal again. Um, I've been tremendously fortunate. Wait. Um, in all kinds of ways, architecturally, my family. Um, <laughs> Accidents. Um, so we went back to Nepal um, this month, this December, to. Um, Look at some other projects. We are going to do. Um, we are going to help in the reconstruction of a school in a region called the um, Gorkha. Uh, as you know, it's the the the, the place where we uh, the the Gorkha soldiers, uh, which uh, is quite famous in the British garrison in Hong Kong, uh, originate from. And then this is uh, one of the school in one of the villages, which is heavily damaged. And then the idea is to also, uh, again, to use bamboo, to use some of the techniques that we have learned in the, um, in the shelter construction and to um, construct a bamboo, uh, a bamboo structure for the schools. This is the, uh, some of the um, drawings that we have produced. 
and we went there in the beginning of um, December, and then um, from the experience of the first trip, we understand uh, that we do have to uh, make sure that we bring uh, one of the models to them. And then uh, it turns out to be quite successful because, as uh, again, no one understand the drawings, and then what they um, what they could understand is the is the is the model itself. So again, we sit in the on the site and then we look at the model and to describe how we can uh, construct this thing. So um, and then the other part of the presentation, I want to talk a bit about my um, works in the past year, which involves uh, uh, architectural, which in involves practicing architecture. And then I uh, start to realize that this idea of the primitive or this idea of um, uh, um, being, uh, how to say, um, reductive or almost like self-constraining already sip into the aesthetic of the drawings that we produced. So. Uh, this is one of the uh, uh, interior projects that uh, we are doing. So in a lot of ways, I think this uh, uh, idea of primitive, it's, it's um, present in our projects. And this is a house that um, I have designed in uh, the mainland. It's finished, it's finished last year, I think. So this is the plan of the um, of the of the house, which is again using a very simple technique of uh, reinforced concrete framing and then um, brick walls. Then um, again, using the idea of the grid for some other projects. This is a competition that we did in um, Bangkok. And this is a uh, another competition that we did. So somehow, you know, uh, uh, in the past uh, year or so, um, I've been quite active in these um, um, architectural projects or um, these projects in in Nepal. And then everything was kind of organized um, into these two organization at this moment. So um, follow us on Facebook and we will update um, news on, on, on these two pages. So if you scan this QR code, it brings you instantly to, to the Facebook uh, page. Yeah, that's what you need to do now.